Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is such a joy once again to welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Good Life Devotion. If you are new, the Good Life Devotion is the center of the daily teaching of God's Word aimed at bringing the entire body of Christ in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And for you as an individual, the Lord has brought us your way to bring you to that will make you much more effective in the work of the ministry so that you can help many more humans to become sons of God and discover the amazing reality of your life in Christ and enjoy your life to the maximum. That's why it's called the Good Life Devotion. It's a devotion because we come to you daily on various platforms. This is going to be an amazing week as we step into the last week of September and we have just one more month to get into the new Christian Conference. Possibly after this we are going to step into the new Christian Conference, have discussions, and I believe you should get set for those times. They are going to be amazing. Let's take a look at what the Lord has for us this week. If you don't yet have your copy of this month's month, but you can't get a copy, go to our website, download a free copy in English or French, or call us and get a hard copy. We're going to study this week along the lines of um, God's word in your life. How you can receive God's word and how you can apply it for situations in your life, and how the Word of God can actually transform you. Recently, um, a minister made a statement about when we recommend God's Word to people, we take it for granted that everyone knows what the Word of God is. So you tell me, oh, you apply the Word, apply the Word. Not many people know what that means. And not many people have the right definition of what that is. So this week, the Lord is actually going to explain some things to you that if you pay a very close attention, your life will be transformed forever. Father, I thank you. I hereby release the grace of knowledge of the holy, understanding and wisdom ministry the fullness of spirit and life in these teachings bringing about that definite change in their lives hallelujah praise god so let's start off today as we take a look at the topic you need the word now more than ever quite a long topic but it's intentional you need the word now more than ever oh praise god you need the word now more than ever. I'm going to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. 
And I think to read, I should take it from verse 25 so that you can get a whole thing. Do in the man's we have just verse 26. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And I often like to explain this, that the Bible is not saying that Christ died only for the church. When it says, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, what it means is, when Christ gave himself for the world, what he got is the church. And you follow, he died for the whole world. But not everyone has yet believed in him. We've been talking to you about just the move of the Spirit. According to divine revelation, that move is going to sweep over half of the world's population into the body of Christ. That's going to be the time that ever the greatest number of people on the earth have been swept into the kingdom by such a great work. Then it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. What is the aim? that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. If you followed us carefully last week, I made known to the whole world the times in which we live. That right now, the greatest event that the entire world is waiting for is the catching away of the church. But before that event, God has shown clearly in the word that are going to be preceding events. The first is going to be the birthing of a move of the spirit. And the activities of that move is that it is going to bring about a teaching, mature teachings in the body of Christ to mature the church into this thing into a church that is glorious, not having spot, not having wrinkle or any such thing. And that is the church Christ is coming to present to himself. Are you following? Now, what we are saying today is that you and I need the word of God more today than ever. And that's what we are going to see why that statement. You see, if you understood the times in which we live, what God is doing, he is maturing his church into the image of his son in terms of its realization and manifestation. How is he doing that? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. He showed you specifically how he's bringing the church into that state that he will come for. He didn't say he's bringing the church there through the workings of wonders, through the workings of miracles, through the infiltration of church into organizations. All these things are good. But he shows us how that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. He's doing it by the word. Now, we have said over and again, the ministers of God have been sent over the years and they kept crying, church, study your Bible. Church, give yourself to the word. And people have not really paid attention to that, but they went on and survived through the powerful ministrations of other Christians to them, and, but it's not so t now. Because in all those ages, it wasn't yet the time in which the major work of God was the preparing of the body of Christ for his coming. Are you following? Now, see, at any point in time, there are things that God was doing that are decreasing. And there are things that God is yet about to do that are beginning to show their glimpses. And then there are things that God is doing as the major thing at that time. Okay? So now, what God is doing as the major thing at this time is the maturing of the church through the word. So what the church needs now is that thing that God is using to work on us now. It is the word. So when you hear we need the word now more than ever. It is true. Okay, 
The first century church needed the word, but not as much as we do today. The church over the past 2,000 years, yes, at every stage the church needed the word, but not as much as today, and I'll show you very soon. So the point here is this. If you're a Christian who went along, you really didn't study your Bible, you really didn't pay attention to teachers who are teaching you deeper things in the Word, and you are just okay with receive, take, you know, etc., be healed, be all these things, and you are getting them, and you were okay, you can't do that anymore. The Lord is calling on you. He says, you need the Word now more than ever. You can't continue to live and, 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 and survive by just um, feeding on the ice cream of the word. No. The church needs the truth of God's word now more than ever. And I'm going to show you why. You see, when God, through Jesus Christ, inaugurated the church on the day of Pentecost, he had an ultimate goal for the church. I'm trying to explain to you why the church, the body of Christ today, needs the word more than before. You know, in centuries past, there were teachers of the word, but many did not pay attention to them. They followed many of those that were functioning in gifts to bless them, and that was okay because of the age of the church then. But I'm telling you now that it's no more okay. Now, the opposite should happen. The church should now give attention to the word because we are in different times now. And I'm trying to show you why. Point number one, God had a goal for the church that was birthed on the day of Pentecost. The church that was birthed on the day of Pentecost was not supposed to remain in that state forever. Let me show you. Book of Ephesians chapter 4. If you read from verse um, 8 all the way into verse 10, he tells you about how Jesus, after he descended into hell, ascended and went to heaven and gave gifts unto men, okay? And then he started telling us about the gifts. Then he says in verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. I often say this and I'll say it again. So are you an evangelist? Your work is not just about going around having crusades. You have a role to equip the saints. Are you a prophet? Your work is not just about prophesying. After doing that one, you have a role to equip the saints. Are you an apostle? It's not about going around planting churches. That's good. But after that, you have a role in equipping the saints. Are you a pastor? It's not just about going around doing naming ceremonies and burial and weddings. No, you have a role to equip the church. So all of us have something to do to equip the church, to perfect the church for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So this is supposed to be going on. Till when? Verse 13. Till we all come. So this must go on to a certain goal, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When you get to a place where you enroll in the uh, icons of Christ or image of Christ, club disciple, you get details into each of these things that we've just mentioned. He says that he wants us to come to a place of arriving at the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This has been God's goal for the church. But how did the church begin? First Peter chapter um, 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow by. So the church is supposed to begin as a newborn babe. And that's how every Christian starts. You start up as a newborn babe. But you are not supposed to remain there. You are supposed to receive equipment from that apostle or prophet or evangelist that God has given you and be equipped for the work of the ministry, contribute to the edifying of the body of Christ until you come in the knowledge of the Son of God with others to the perfect man, to maturity, perfect man, and then to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Something is supposed to happen. Look at verse, um, again, back to Ephesians. Hope I'm not moving too fast for you. 
uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, we, we ended at verse 13. I'm going to go forward into verse 14 so I see something beautiful. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to this. So that we henceforth be no more babies. But he said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk. So there was a stage that the church was born to be babe. But he's bringing us to a place that we will cease to be babes. Are you following this? Because he said, an heir, as long as he remains a babe, does not differ from a slave. So it means that in God's mind, the beginning of the church, they were still going to live like slaves. But there must come a day when these heirs that are living like slaves must mature and cease to live as slaves and begin to live and reign as kings on the earth. Are you following this? If you are a Christian, you need to understand God's program for the church. It's disheartening to know that a good number of people just think the church is about, oh, I'm in this church, I go to church on Sunday, I have a powerful minister of God, we have prayer meetings, we pray and things are happening, we, we are getting breakthroughs, we are married. That is not all that the church is about. There is a greater vision for the church to move from a stage of being a baby organization and continuously grow to become an adult organization for a divine function on the earth. So the ultimate goal of God for the church was to get a church to arrive at a state of the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that is God's goal for you as an individual. Are you following this? So, though the church began as a baby organization in, on the day of Pentecost, God had a goal. Now, I'm still trying to prove to you that we need the word of God now than ever. Now, when God started the church off, knowing that the church was a baby organization, what did he do? He needed to establish the church and make it develop roots and be edified enough so that the devil through the systems and the religions of the world cannot destroy it. So he began with an initial building of the church through the supernatural works of the Holy Ghost by pouring for so many gifts of the Spirit into the church. So through these babies, of the generations past, the Holy Ghost worked mighty works. Look at the church in Corinth. The Bible said that they were a baby church, canal church, and yet there was no church that was more endowed with the manifestations of the Spirit than the Corinthian church. So gifts, they are the works of the Spirit. They do not depend on the maturity of the vessel. God didn't count their immaturity as a problem because he knew they were babes. So he was working for them through the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And that was necessary to silence the, the persecutions, the accusations of Judaism and other religions so that the church can be established. So Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 16. Are you following? Right. Matthew chapter 16, let's go to verse 18. He says, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock of the revelation that Jesus is the son of the living God. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that is what God has done over the past 2,000 years. World powers have arisen. Some thought they will finish the Bible. Some thought they will finish Christians. What hasn't Christianity been through? But Christ has built his church. And as we speak now, it's a known fact. There's no organization that can say, I for me, I will successfully fight and bring Christianity to an end. It's not possible. It is known. So now that the structure is established, God says, it is time for me to begin to mature you to my goal. Are you following that? And so over the period that God was building the church so that the enemy cannot destroy it and all that, he was using gifts of the Spirit. 
So it was much more the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, operating by the power of the Holy Ghost, doing wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost. But the ultimate goal is for the individual members of the body of Christ to become the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that they do not do the things again by the gift of the Spirit, but they do them as people who are functioning in their natural nature as sons and daughters of God. How is he changing them or maturing them from this gift of the Spirit-driven stage Unto the state of perfection by the washing of the water by the word. I get it. So, people in 2000 years, 1500 years, 1700 years, those years ago, if they didn't really give attention to the word, that was okay because in their days it wasn't really about building in terms of maturing them, it was really about building the church. But now, it is about developing and maturing the individual members of the church into a, a perfect church. And what is needed now to do that is no more the gift of the Spirit. It is now the word of truth. This is why the Lord is telling you now that we need the word of God now more than ever. Oh, hallelujah. I think it's a good time to go on break right now and return before we round off for today. I'll be right back after this break. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We have exciting news by God's good grace. The Good Life Devotion with Dr. Bindan is spread so mightily the truth of god's word is growing and prevailing everywhere we are so glad to announce that your favorite good life devotion is now airing on adanu radio 107.7 megahertz in adaklu district in the volta region and doma fm 100.7 megahertz doma in the bono region of ghana glory to god Tune in to Adanu Radio and Dorma FM at exactly 1.30 p.m. GMT every Monday to Friday to enjoy biblically authoritative teachings by Dr. David Bender and your life will be transformed. Connect your family and friends in these areas to enjoy as you are. Life is good. Enjoy. enjoy. Praise the Lord. So it is simple and it's self-explanatory. If now what God is doing is to mature the church and bring it to a state of glory without spot or wrinkle, and the material he's using to produce that is the word, then what is it that the church needs now? It's the word of God. It's the word of God. So wonderful brother, wonderful sister, what God sent me to tell you today Change your focus. Give attention to God's word from today like you've never done. And body of Christ, hear ye me. It is time we give attention to the truth of God's word than ever. Now, when we say give attention to the truth of God's word, it doesn't mean that, okay, the miracles will not happen and all that. We are going to see higher dimensions of the miracles of God. There is nobody operating by the gifts of the Spirit, that has done much more than what Jesus has done. But Jesus said, these works we will do and greater. There is a level of works that you begin to do as your divine nature that you cannot do just by the gifts of the Spirit. Paul said it. He said, when we are using gifts, we are using part of the work. But when we mature and we are no more using gifts and its nature, we have it in full. Maybe you don't, you don't think that's what he said, but let me show you. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Let me take it from verse 8. He uses charity for love. He says that charity never fails. Then he says, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. The word fail them means they shall cease, they shall stop. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So there's coming a stage that the operation in all these gifts will no more be there. That's the stage we are stepping into. It says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. So the usage of gifts is not the complete thing. Because of the immaturity, 
The Holy Ghost cannot give you the full picture. He does it and you don't even understand. Then he says, but when that which is mature, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is impartial be done away with. I love what he said. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish So the church is to become to the measure of the, the perfect man. That's the state where they put away the childish way of doing things. That's the gift way to the nature way. Are you following this? He says, for now we see through a glass darkly, <laughs> but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. How I pray you understand these things. So we are in the days when the thing is switching from gifts to nature. The gifts will not cease immediately. They will continually be a takeover by nature as the gift decrease. And to get to a place where there's no more prophesying, there's no more all this, but we just live as icons of Christ. So you meet a son of God, you've met knowledge. So you don't need part of it as a word of knowledge. If you meet a son of God, you've met wisdom. You don't need part of it as a word of wisdom. Are you following that? If you meet a son, you've met power, omnipotence. You don't need a part of it as the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, praise God. Let's pray right now that the body of Christ will get to know these truths and align ourselves with the word of God to come there. Shall we pray? Mark Mumbra Kazita Paroko Shederebo Shata. Bras Giba Roko Mana. Thank you, Father, for the release of life and spirit in this truth to the whole body of Christ in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have been watching us and you have not yet become a son of God, there's no Jesus in your heart. What are you waiting for? Listen, with all you heard, there's nothing in this world. If you don't receive Christ to become a son of God, you would have missed out on the greatest thing for which you were born. Jesus has done everything. You don't need to do anything. All you need is to receive what he has done with thanksgiving. What has he done? He came into this world and died and took away your sin and died of the world and brought eternal life. He says, if you acknowledge that I actually came and died and rose again and I'm Lord, you get eternal life for free. You become a son of God. Let this happen in your life today by saying this with your heart after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I am so grateful that you came into this world and that you died for me. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead. And I believe that you are Lord today. Jesus, I receive the life you brought, eternal life, into me right now. And I declare I am born again. Hallelujah. So that is with all your heart. Truly, you are born again. All you need to do is to contact us. We'll help you with material that will help you to grow in Christ. Don't forget I'm going to come here again tomorrow. Our next episode of Glad Devotion. I'll take a look at this subject matter of the word of God and our lives as sons and daughters of God. Manada life. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrade, Kaswa Lagon, Tachiman. Tema Newtown, Ashama Newtown, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, The Multinationals Church, or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good.
Enjoy。